Almost no one predicted a Donald Trump win in 2016. Many believe even Trump himself was shocked to win the White House. But one man saw it coming. Professor Alan Lickman has correctly predicted every single U.S. election since 1984, and he joins me now. Professor Lickman, good evening. Good evening. Professor, didn't President Trump send you a letter congratulating you on your 2016 prediction? Guess what? No, you have it there. happened to have it here. Oh How my, about that? Oh, my God, his handwriting is so big and pompous. Uh, yep. What does that say? It says, uh, Professor... Professor, congrats, good call, Donald Trump. That is amazing. <laughs> what did that tell you about the man? It tells me the man is the consummate showman and the consummate egotist. Everything rises and falls with him. But I consider it a very gracious gesture, to tell you the truth. That's nice. Now, has traditional polling become antiquated? I don't answer my landline because the only people who call it are pollsters and the captain who keeps telling me I may have already won a free cruise. Why didn't most other pollsters predict this disaster? I mean, the Trump presidency. Well, I'm not a pollster. That's the difference. I look at the fundamentals that drive an election through my 13 keys to the White House, which look at the strength and performance of the party holding the White House. Now, you've created, as you said, your own unique system to determine a winner called the 13 keys model, which you adapted from an earthquake forecasting model, and what better way to predict a Trump presidency than by a, a method uh, designed to predict a natural disaster? <laughs> what are the 13 keys? They are midterm election results, whether there is a contest for the incumbent party nomination, whether the sitting president is running, whether there's a significant third party polling at at least 10 percent, long and short term economy, social unrest, policy change, scandal foreign policy successes and failures, and only two keys have anything to do with the candidates, and they ask the very high threshold question of whether the incumbent or challenging party candidate is one of those very rare, once in a generation, truly inspirational candidates like FDR on the Democratic side or Reagan on the Republican side. And, of course, Trump is his own type of candidate. Were you tempted to add an up-all-night tweeting in all caps from the toilet key just for this election? You know, I, I probably should have if you had called me ahead of time. But Trump does not get the charisma key because, as you point out, he appeals to a very narrow base of followers. Now, Professor, tell us who is going to win the 2020 presidential election. Okay. Remember, under my system... If the party holding the White House, Trump, loses six or more keys, they're out. At the end of 2019, Trump was only down four, too short of defeat. But then we know we had the pandemic and the cries for social and racial justice. And although Trump acknowledged my prediction, he never understood the deeper meaning of the keys, that when you're the incumbent, it's the record that counts. So instead, he reverted to his 2016 playbook and thought he could talk his way out of these disasters. It didn't work. So my final prediction is that Donald Trump becomes the first U.S. president since Bill Clinton beat George H.W. Bush in 1992 to lose a re-election bid, and our next president will be Joe Biden. Well, there you have it. Wow. But, sir, is it possible that your model is wrong for the first time ever because no one could have predicted this pandemic and the resulting economic downturn? Now, I assume there wasn't a COVID isn't real and I don't have to wear a mask in Walmart. <coughs> oh, no, I'm sick now, <laughs> Key. Right. Of course not. Who could have predicted that? But when I developed this model with the seismologist, Belagia Kailas Borak, we went all the way back to 1860 using the seismological methods of pattern recognition to determine the difference between political stability and political earthquake. So this system has held through enormous changes in our economy, our society. So if it wasn't for COVID, then Donald Trump might have won. So COVID, in many ways, horrible. In some ways, eh, pretty good. Well, you know, my predictions are predictions, not endorsements. They're nonpartisan. And I can tell you, predicting Trump last time did not make me very popular in 90 percent Democratic Washington, D.C., where I teach at American University. But here's the important point. It wasn't just the COVID. It was the failed response to the COVID. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. All right. All right thank you, sir. Care.